Hi there, I'm Colette Jay from Mrs. Jay in the Library, and in this video I'm going to show you two different tools you can use to create your school library website. And these tools are really the best ones that I recommend, uh, while there are many others, of course. Uh, so those two tools are LibGuides and Google Sites. And before we begin, I want to make sure you get, grab this checklist for your school library website. I will put the link above or below wherever you see this video, and you can grab that for free so that you can make sure that your school library website that you're building, or if you're revamping an old one, um, has all of the things on it that you really need so that students and teachers and community members can use the library resources most efficiently and effectively. So let's jump in here to first LibGuides. Uh, now LibGuides is what I have been using um, with my district for the past eight or so years. Um, our whole department used it um, and it is a paid subscription. So that was the only downside really. Um, we were able to build out our websites pretty quickly within a year or so. Uh, we could cover all of the beginner level basics, we could do all of the next level features, and it was very easy for one person to create a page and then everyone else to grab a copy of that page and stick it on our library websites. Change out any links that we needed to, change our links to our databases to be for our school, or uh, change our links to the ebooks, and we were done. And so that made it really simple uh, to build out specific websites. Um, but LibGuides basically has this, these tabs at the top, and each tab takes you to a separate page on the site or the LibGuide. Um, so in the checklist, uh, the library homepage has these three sections at the top. Um, and this was really useful when I created this, um, that students would just click on I am a student, and it would would take them to the digital library. Um, teachers would uh, click on the teacher section and it would take them to a separate LibGuide. I do wish I had made that um, all part of the same LibGuide or site. Um, and then the parent section went to the parent resources here. Um, so the nice thing about this was, again, we could uh, have one person create something, uh, such as like a kindergarten, first and second grade specific page. Um, and all of these boxes or uh, building blocks here were very easy to grab from other pages. Once you created a box that had an image embedded with this text here at the bottom, then it was very simple to grab that same box and plop it in somewhere else. Um, so I could make one for the digital library and then I could grab that same box here and it appears in the kindergarten, first and second grade. So when I made a new page, it was very simple to just grab boxes from different pages and voila, I was done in about five minutes. The downside was, of course, each one of these boxes need to be created separately, and that took a lot of time. Um, so this probably, the whole website has grown over the years, probably about the past five or six years, I've really taken it more seriously. I've created sections for library centers, um, but mostly this past year or two, I've mostly just directed students to go to the digital library tab or click on I am a student. This is mainly where all of our resources are, and I would just tell them to click on the one we were using at that moment. So um, pros and cons. The pros is that uh, if you have your whole department subscribed to LibGuides, it's very useful um, for collaborating and for sharing the workload of creating a library website, especially if most of your sites will look the same. However, the downside is it is a paid subscription and a pretty pricey one at that, um, considering there are lots of other cheaper options out there for building any kind of website, even on something like Wix or Squarespace. So um, for secondary librarians though, I still feel like this is a very good tool. It's great for organizing research units um, and it is very useful because it works a lot with the vendors and database subscriptions that most school libraries subscribe to. So that might make it worth it for you to keep subscribing to LibGuides. Um, however, I will say if you're an elementary librarian or if you don't have any budget whatsoever, then Google Sites or Microsoft Teams' version, which is Microsoft Teams SharePoint, um, is your best bet. So if your district ha is either a Google Workspace district or a Microsoft Teams district, I really would recommend using their website building software. It will make it a lot easier to share with students um, and there's a less like 
likely a chance that it will be blocked. That is an important thing to note though, that if you're creating something in Google Sites or any tool that you're using, make sure you clear it with your tech department that students and staff will be able to access it, as well as the general public, no matter where you publish it. So Google Sites is hands down my recommendation. When I was experimenting with revamping the LibGuides uh, for our whole district, I looked around at the options and since we were a Google Workspace district, I really felt that this was the right move to use Google Sites. Um, so a couple things to note about Google Sites is that while LibGuides is a very vertical, um, you're stuck with those columns and everything you design has to be in either one, two, or three columns, and it's very vertical designed um, with the building blocks. In Google Workspace, um, you're still using vertical blocks, but everything's more horizontal. So you can see how the welcome section and the search widget here are all aligned. That is one whole section, and there's no way to take the search widget and like offset it a little bit. Like that's really, it doesn't like doing that at all. It wants everything to be in a one long bar the whole way across the website. And then you can have another horizontal bar below it. So that's where I chose to put my student teacher and parent community member um, sections. And then these are each linked to a page in the menu. And so that was one thing that actually made designing the website on, in Google Sites a little easier because you're only working within that bar. And then within that horizontal bar, you have uh, chunks and blocks that you can resize um, the width to control how big or small they are. Um, so it's just a different paradigm. It's a different platform and way of building things. I will say, though, that Google Site ha has much more modern technology when it comes to website building than LibGuides. I don't really feel that LibGuides has kept up with most recent website design trends. Uh, so um, to show you an example of the student's digital uh, library website or digital resources. Um, this is what it ended up looking like. And, and so each of these is an image and I didn't put an explanation below it. I just wrote down what it is and put another link to it. So this is an image with a caption below it for each of these. Um, and you'll see that some of them are not exactly spaced and equal width. Um, that's because again, uh, within that horizontal bar that Google Sites has, if I made them too much bigger, the icons would look way outsized, like Mac and Via would end up looking a lot bigger, or Epic would start look a lot bigger. And so I kind of had to shrink them down to make them all look about equal size, uh, to make it look how I wanted. So this is just one of those quirks. Um, LibGuides has the same kind of quirks, uh, just with their vertical columns instead of horizontal. Um, so, and then I just made different sections with those horizontal bars for each of our databases and some research websites. So this was just upload an image and add a link and you're done. Um, so it's, the creating is a lot quicker with Google Sites. Um, and then with LibGuides, it's very simple to make project pages. I added um, grade level specific pages here, and then these pages are actually hidden. So they're not in the menu. You can only get to them through that link. Um, but you can see here that I just added kind of the most important things here. I added um, eBooks that we had. And this is a, when students are signed in, they'll see um, a list in Mac and Via, our eBooks platform, uh, that, that again was super easy to embed. Um, and then just the links to the databases we wanted. I could copy and paste these blocks from the student resources page. So that is the one downside is that LibGuides makes it easy to just grab that box. So to build this page using the same blocks as the digital library resources under student resources, I did have to flip back and forth between the two pages, um, go to the student resources page, select a block, um, hit control C to copy it, and then come over here and tap control V uh, to paste it. Uh, and then adjust the sizing or whatever I needed to here. Um, and the downside to that is that 
if something would change, like any of the database links would change, I would have to change it on every single one of the pages I created. It doesn't automatically update when you update it one place. Um, however, I will say that Google Sites makes it super easy to embed things like this virtual field trip uh, to the Beyond the Battle Food Museum from Lauren Tarshis. Uh, that made a really great way to add some visual interest to the project page um, and also give students another place to extend their learning, all from the one resource page that we had on our library website. Um, so. That is an example of a project specific page. Um, that, by the way, on the checklist, that's one of your next level features and expert level extras. Um, so that's really um, a, a, an advanced thing that you should uh, not be thinking about if you're just starting from scratch here. Um, so that's a quick overview of kind of how LibGuides uh, and Google Sites can look and how they can work for your library. Whichever one that you're choosing, whether it's LibGuides or Google Sites or Microsoft SharePoint, um, really depends on the software that you, you have available, um, if you have any budget available, and whether your district can support that. And so uh, those are the factors to consider when you're looking at these two tools. Um, of course, there are many others. You can even actually use your library's circulation software, such as Follow Destiny to create a minimum viable product kind of library website. Um, that means that you're just putting the very bare minimum basics, just the beginner level stuff. So your contact information, um, perhaps a picture of yourself uh, as the library staff, and a link to your catalog, which Destiny provides for you. Um, so however, you should not use this platform permanently as the only place to hold your library resources. There's just so much more that really should be on your library website, and this is not a great place to hold all of that information. Um, so if you have no other choice, um, then that's fine. If your district won't allow Google Sites, if your district doesn't allow Microsoft SharePoint or anything like that for some reason, then I do understand that sometimes we're limited by our the tech department rules. Um, but if you have to have a free software or platform option, I would really strongly suggest looking into Google Sites or Microsoft SharePoint um, and creating a site there that has more than just a link to your catalog and your contact information. Um, but it really would allow you to grow your library website into more of a digital hub and the digital face of your school library to your community. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, you can check out the links above or below this video wherever you see it. Um, and that will give you some more helpful resources and next steps for you. Take care.